Hey everyone, this is Calcio from GPI, and today I'm going to give you a lesson about white pine blister rust. Um, I'm going to give you information on how to identify trees that are infected with blister rust, what the life cycle of the disease is, and then also the preventative or proactive measures that um, groups like GPI or the Forest Service are taking in order to save white pine populations. So to begin, I'll tell you a little bit about western white pines. If you've been on our GPI programming before, there's white pines in the archery range that we'll see. But if you haven't already seen a western white pine, there's plenty of pictures of them on the internet, and I'll showcase one here. Um, but how you identify them is it's a soft pine tree. Um, it's part of a, a species, and there are five pine needles to a cluster. Uh, they kind of look like fluffy soft trees and they do feel really soft um, however their population has been decimated in the pacific northwest um, because of a fungal infection called blister rust which is what i'll tell you about today so as you can see here this is a healthy western white pine and these are the needles before I can talk about blister rust, I should tell you how to identify a western white pine that's infected with blister rust. Um, so we do something called red flagging, which is where you look at a western white pine tree and you can tell if it's infected with a disease um, with a number of symptoms. One of those symptoms is something that we call red flagging and it's where the pine needles on a branch are turning red and so you'll see whole branches on a tree that are dying and very bright red orange but if you look at the base of that branch there's something called a canker and it's just a sore that's symptomatic of the infection and in the summertime is when they're super easy to identify it's a diamond shaped canker sore and um, it leaks orange resin and that's actually what happens when the spores from the infection start to break through the bark and then they're going into the air and infecting other species of plants. So that's how you identify it. Um, also, if you have a book of reference, it's super great. Um, I'll insert clear pictures for you guys, but as you can see, this these are the different stages of the infection. The summertime um, symptoms are within this picture and you can see it kind of looks like the tree is oozing sap but really this is just symptomatic of the spores breaking through the bark. Now we'll talk about the life cycle a bit more. This is what you would red flag the infection on the bottom of a current leaf. And this is the spores preparing to burst from the tree and then the diamond shaped canker sore. Even though blister rust is extremely destructive to the populations of white pines we have here in the Pacific Northwest, it has a really cool life cycle. So what happens is um, there are the fungus is in the air and it infects the needles first of a white pine tree. And what it does is it travels through those needles, through the branch, up to the base of the branch on the tree and it infects the whole tree and this process takes about three or four years and after the third or fourth summer so after that period of time um, what happens is that canker develops that diamond shaped orange canker that I told you about that develops and then the spores start to break through the bark and then they go infect what we call alternate hosts um, these are called ribes um, or better known as currants and gooseberries. And so after that happens, um, in the fall time, the currants and gooseberries are infected, um, they start to die, and then the fungus then uh, creates symptoms where it can release spores yet again into the air, and then that finds western white pines and infects them again. And that's kind of how the whole life cycle goes. But a good question to ask is, what if you don't have those ribes, those currants or gooseberries in an area where there's western white pines? Well, that's when you get into high elevation areas or um, general, generally places where clouds um, can transport the spores <laughs> in them. Um, so you'll have places like mountaintops or ridges. 
um, saddles. And if you don't know what a saddle is, it's a little dip between two points. So say this is like a little mountain ridge point and this is another one, there's gonna be a dip here where clouds can pass over easy. Um, and the spores can travel within those clouds. So if there isn't foliage, there's still a chance that western white pines can become infected. So as with all diseases or insect problems we have with our crops or timber, um, in order to manage these resources and make sure that they stay alive, we try to problem solve how we can fix this. Blister rust is a tricky problem and I myself worked with GPI in the Forest Service um, a couple years ago on the Soxhuato Seed Orchard where we have western white pines. Uh, some of these pine trees are infected, especially the younger trees are um, more easily infected than um, ad adult trees. Um, but what are the efforts that we're going through to help solve this problem of blister rust? Well, there's not much we can do other than um, make sure that we cross-pollinate really strong trees with each other. So um, we work with a silver culturist who collects cones and we look at the health of the seeds and the health of the tree and we try to uh, naturally breed a tree that is resistant to this disease. So while it's you know not much, it's still a really good effort and it's really cool to look into. Um, if you guys decide to go out and try to look for western white pines, like I said, there's some at the archery range. Um, make sure that you maintain your social distance with your neighbors, your community members, and your friends. Um, let's keep everybody healthy. Also, if you find a picture um, and you have a social media account or your parent or Guardian does, uh, share that with us. Tag GPI in it and we'd love to continue a conversation with that and have you guys be a part of this social media presence that we have right now with the virus going on. So thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.